you're new, I hope you'll stick around and um, follow our homeschool journey. In today's video, I'm actually going to be doing a combined video of my middle schoolers. So I have a seventh grader and a sixth grader, and I'm going to be going over what I am going to be doing for them for um, their curriculum choices and picks for the upcoming school year. Um, I, we're actually winding down. It's already July. We start back July 7th, so um, I already have pretty much everything. I have a few books that I'm ordering off of Amazon that have not made it here yet, um, so I will be talking about them. But for the most part, everything is here. And the way that I'm doing their curriculum is quite different from what I've done in the past. So that's why I combined the video because they're doing a lot of subjects together. So I didn't see the purpose of actually doing two separate videos. Um, what I'm gonna talk about first is the biggest part of their curriculum, which is gonna be their world geography, their ecology, and their literature. <laughs> components of their English language art curriculum. So I kind of already talked about this if you watched my first grade curriculum choices, which talked all about Beautiful Feet books and how I was actually doing that with both sets of children. So that's what you're gonna first see. This is my Beautiful Feet books. This is the um, science and story for seventh through ninth grade. And this is our teacher guide. And this is just going through world geography and ecology. And I um, am gonna be using this uh, so for their science for the year, I'm actually tying in ecology and I'm going to be buying um, Generation Genius, which I have not purchased yet. I'm kind of waiting probably until August to purchase it because we probably won't dig deep into science until around August. Um, but we're going to be doing read alouds and I'm going to be pulling in. So this curriculum, our first read aloud is actually The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. And so I'm going to do this and then I'm actually going to be pulling in science units that talk about um, renewable energy. Also, within this curriculum, it talks all about ecology, which is your biomes, your ecosystems, um, the flow of energy, all of that. So that actually goes in perfect. That is science. And it comes with multiple books. So I'm just going to kind of show you. So with that, it also comes with junk drawer ecology. And this is full of science experiments that my kids will actually be doing throughout the year. And it comes with the wondrous workings of planet Earth. And this is the ecosystem of different areas. So like this is the ecosystem of the Amazon rainforest. So we'll be using these books to tie into their science. So that's why this curriculum is so great. And that's why I'm loving it because it's going to encompass so many of our subjects. Um, so that this is going to be our science. In our like for ecology and other sciences because through read aloud like energy with the boy who harnessed the wind it also is going into our history so we're going to be doing the history of the continents or countries and we're starting with africa so i pulled out some different books so this one it came with this one the book of nations which if you look at it it just literally pulls out it has every single country on earth in it. So we'll be talking about the countries through here. I bought this one, a African Amazing Africa, which also goes into country by country. So we will be looking at this book as we study Africa. <clears throat> but with, um, we're also gonna be using everything you need to know about world history through the um, big fat notebook. And again, it's going to go into all kinds of information that I will be covering with my kids. And I like this because it even has like comprehension questions. So I will be using this book too as we go through. So that's going to be their world history. And then that brings me to their um, English language arts curriculum. Um, again, through using the Beautiful Feet books. And so that's going to come through the kids reading special books. And I'm going to go ahead and show you their first read aloud. So this is where it kind of goes different. So we have our first read aloud is The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. I will read this to both of my kids. They will be reading these books. This is for my seventh grader, Orange for the Sunsets. This is my sixth graders, When Stars Are Scattered. And this is actually a graphic novel, which is going to be great for him because Reading is not his favorite um, subject. Some other books that I have here that we will be reading. Um, this is another read aloud that they have us read um, together. And it's cool because it's like poetry. It's just little poems. Some other books that they will be reading is 
see the dribbler, you can see the lion, a little walk to water, the elephant girl, and she persisted. So lots of literature, and I'm actually um, pretty much creating the units for that. So what I'm doing is I'm coming up with the comprehension questions. I'm coming up with um, what I want them to focus on looking at the standards for sixth grade and seventh grade. I do have that elementary education background, so that helps me a lot. Um, but I can pull up what standards need to be covered, and then I can focus on like theme or mood or character traits, whatever it might be. And I'm going to also be doing that with the read aloud. And so I'm kind of like preview, reading around, making notes things like that, so I can talk about what I want to talk about <laughs> and model for them how to find those um, and use those standards for that reading comprehension. Um, if you're interested in more of that, I will be doing a weekly. This is what we're doing this week, and that's when I'll go into more detail about what we're learning that week. And so if you're really interested in like how I'm breaking these books down and doing novel studies, please make sure to follow me, subscribe, hit the um, like button. That way you can make sure that you see all of my videos and how I'm going to be doing that week by week. Right now, I'm just kind of giving you an overview of the curriculum. So inside this cur curriculum also, <clears throat> I mean, here's all the books. I've literally, these are the books it's talking about, and it has a documentary. So this is where I pulled all of these books from. These are extra books that did not come with the curriculum that you can add on. And that's how I'm adding them on. And then each day, I'm sorry, I don't have the stuff to be able to flip my camera today like I did with my first graders. So each day you have your required materials, your activity supplies, what you're going to be doing for geography, ecology, and activity, and then the story or the read aloud, the boy who harnessed the wind. And it actually comes up with questions and things for you to do with them there. This one says, describe the process of getting electrical services to one's home in, in the rural country. And so as you go through this lessons, it also at the very, very end of the unit, it has a recipe. That we can cook together. So that would be like at the very end of the African unit. So this is the main part of our curriculum, but it's not everything. So some other things that we are doing, so um, for English language arts, this is their main literature that they'll be reading. And I haven't bought all the books for every country. I'm kind of waiting. This is just for Africa when we, because I'm kind of letting it just take as long as it takes. And then when we move into Asia, I'll purchase the books for Asia. Um, with their English language arts, another thing they're going to be doing is their writing. And this is where their writing is kind of different. So first I have my seventh grader. So he's doing, they're both using um, Heron books. And I'm trying to look for my seventh graders here. I have their little bins. See, they have these little bins to keep all their schoolwork organized. Oh, you know what? I think he's actually supposed to be starting with this book, maybe, instead of the sunset. I need to look, because that book is in his bin, too. They're both in his bin, so I need to figure out which one. So this is the workbook for him for his thing, and this is his actual, um, like, textbook. And then here is... A breakdown and a student checklist so I just put this they have binders this goes in the very beginning of his binder it kind of tells him what he's gonna be doing for that net day so he puts his name his date and it gives him a checklist of what he needs to get done and then it has a spot where I can like sign it or check off that yes I, I've seen him visually do his activities for the week and so what it looks like and he's doing how to break it down make it work for you he's doing grammar and then he's moving into essay writing and they recommend their curriculum for middle school. So even though it sounds like it's stuff they should already know, they have it where it's talking about middle school. So here's a page, he reads the, the book, grammar, he reads sentences and parts of speech. And then over here in his workbook, he has an activity that goes with each correspond pages that he reads. So that's what he's doing for writing. So for his ELA, he has his literature, which is our reading comprehension skill. This is his writing and grammar, because we're doing essay writing too. And then he also has what I call a vo vocabulary word of the day. So I'm just gonna show you one example. And this is a digital thing. I bought it from Daily Skill Builders. So I don't have like a book to show you, but this is, I just printed out. So week two, day three, what they have to do is they have a vocabulary word of the day. So this one is feud. They have to define it. Use it in a sentence, 
write three synonyms and three antonyms. And each day they have a new vocabulary word. And then on Fridays they have like a little vocabulary review sheet that kind of just goes over all the words they learned for that week. I just think it's really important to build vocabulary and my sixth grader and seventh grader have the exact same words. Now I'm going to show you what I kind of do with my sixth grader because he has a little bit more stuff for ELA than my books. Where are his books? He's working with grammar books. I don't see them in here. So he's actually doing, yeah, I have his vocab. And then he also is doing this with me, which is pride reading. This is level uh, four. They only have five levels. The next level is just a reading comprehension level. Um, he's very good with all of his um, fine skills, but I do notice that he has to constantly be spiraling or he forgets them. So we actually have just been working through this book. We've been working through this book for like two years. Um, and he really likes it. He, I think it's because it gives him confidence because it is so easy. And ELA is where he struggles the most. So we're just working through all of the sounds. So I just do this little activity with him. It doesn't take very long. Um, this is like his little workbook where we like manipulate work on sentence structure, manipulating um, sounds. We, he reads a story, there's like a comprehension activity that goes along with each sound. And then there's a spelling test that goes along with it as well. So I'm kind of just doing that with him on top of his writing. And let me see if I can pull out his writing for you. So he is doing um, hair and books for writing, but he's doing how to write sentences people love to read. So this goes into how to write better sentences, I guess, longer sentences, and it kind of goes into your grammar too. So again, what I love about this curriculum and this is their little learning guide. It literally tells them what to do, and it has places where they can check mark it off. So this completely makes it independent. So that, and then here is his actual like, textbook. So it goes into like trickier nouns, um, verbs, trickier verbs. So it, I mean, it's a pretty. So he'll be reading this in the textbook. Sorry, this video is not going to be the best because of the way I couldn't get the camera. And then they actually have the activity guide to go with it. So there's your activity. So this is where I started him for writing. And then on top of that, they have their, um, they have like a logic. So I like to do mind benders and logic with them. So I'm just doing this little mind benders with them. Um, I love these two. It's where you get clues and you have to figure out who who has what. So who, what's the name of the cat? Um, what's the name of the dog? The name of the goat or the horse? And so they just give them certain little clues and then they have to figure it out. So we have the mind benders. We actually started that over the summer. So if we finish this book, I'll just buy the next book up for them. We also um, are doing, um, for math, we're doing unlock math. And I'm actually going to have to do like a screen, like, fill my screen to show you it. It's completely a digital curriculum. <clears throat> um, a lot of math, they're both doing the math foundations and then I let them work <laughs> at, it all, at their own pace. So as soon as they finish that and they have, um, cause I kind of have it set up where they have to score an 80 or higher before it moves them on to the next lesson. And this is just a big review because the next thing it goes into is pre-algebra and then algebra. So I wanna make sure they have a good understanding of all their math foundations before they move into that pre-algebra sector of math. So um, what I like about it is it has videos, it has like a, a daily skill builders, which is like a spiral review activity, and then it has your actual work that goes with the video that you watch, and then they have some like a challenging question at the bottom. And then in each part it has like a score, so each part they get scored on and they can go back and fix whichever part they're struggling with. Um, but we're going to be do, doing Unlock Math, Math Foundations for both of my kids. Um, and I'm letting them work at their own pace so they could easily go into pre-algebra this year, depending on how um, fast they can get through those foundations. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you stick around because I'll definitely be going into what I'm teaching each week. Those videos are going to start going live on Fridays. This actual, this Friday is going to be the, well, by the time I do this video, probably that first Friday has already came out. That's our first week back to school. And then the next one you'll see is the first actual official weekend school where we're doing schoolwork. Not the fun 
beginning of the school year carnival, which that is so cool. I'm so excited for it. So make sure you go check that out if you have not seen that video, because I'm super excited for our back to school carnival um, video that is going to release. I think it's going to release actually on the 4th of July, because that's a Friday this year. Um, thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you'll stick around and happy homeschooling. Bye.